and by GECs through direct elections who are present. I declare the motion passed. Debates on motions with no legislative effect. Motion in improving the employment terms of civil servants, enhancing the efficiency of policy implementation, and promoting creativity and innovation. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. I now call upon the Honorable Tony Z to speak and move the motion. President, I move that the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. Madam Deputy, first, I like to explain why I like to use uh, the civil service as the topic of uh, my motion because I represent uh, the um, architects, uh, surveyors, uh, planners, functional constituency. Many of my constituents are civil servants, and I once I served for the civil service for uh, 12 years after I graduated in 1976, and I um, I have recently been appointed to the uh, Standing Commission on Conditions of Service of uh, the Civil Service, and I have a better understanding of uh, the uh, situation of the civil service now. The civil service is the backbone of the government of Hong Kong, even though we have got the political appointment system after the Hanover, and uh, we have politically appointed uh, heads of bureaus and also uh, heads of and also our principal officers. And the CE is also a politically appointee. Well, uh, if uh, civil servants are not sufficiently remunerated, if efficiency is poor, if our policies are not innovative, then we cannot catch up with uh, the uh, needs of the develop of uh, society, and uh, Hong Kong will suffer. Uh, so will be the well-being of the seven million people living in Hong Kong. My motion has got three parts. First, uh, to improve, to adopt effective measures to improve the employment terms, manpower, work environment, and continue education, training of civil service, etc. Now, we do not just have to ensure that we have sufficient strength of civil service. We have to ensure that uh, the uh, skills and positions are well matched. And then, uh, for those employed after 2000, we have to check, we have to ensure, uh, we have to review the, um, the um, conditions of service and also pays and benefits. Now, in many departments, uh, we have the problem of uh, insufficiency strength and also uh, mismatch of skills and posts. In particular, we have more needs uh, to, more, we need to deal with housing and pressing issues. Many government departments, the professional grades in particular, have seen a major growth in the workload and they are exhausted. In my election campaign, I urge the relevant departments to employ more um, manpower and to create more posts. They have responded uh, positively. Last year, there was a growth of 3.7% in the civil service, the highest since the handover. And uh, in my uh, posts related to my uh, FC, have seen growth as well. I'd like to thank the CE, uh, the uh, CS, as well as the Secretary for the Civil Service for their hard work. Yes, in some departments, manpower is boosted, but the hardware aspect has not uh, kept caught up, such as uh, the provision of uh, office space and furniture, uh, this and that. This has affected the occupational health of uh, civil servants. For new recruits, because they are new to the civil service, they uh, um, they are inexperienced uh, with government uh, business, and they need training, and they uh, need a mentoring of um, more experienced civil servants. So even though manpower is boosted uh, in the short term, the workload of uh, the whole department may 
rise as a result. I understand that the government is working very hard to improve the problem associated with office accommodation. For instance, the headquarters of the buildings department have been moved to the new government offices in West Kowloon. I visited the uh, building. Indeed, there is a lot of improvement in the office accommodation. There is open plan and uh, modern um, equipment and the senior uh, posts or senior officers have uh, sacrificed part of their own uh, space uh, for uh, co-sharing a space and they have also uh, left uh, some of uh, the um, uh, uh, the uh, space uh, with uh, good s uh, s uh, scenery uh, for uh, their junior officers. I think uh, other government departments uh, should follow the example of the buildings department. And I think the government should uh, be more lenient in the provision of space for co-sharing among workers. And in the buildings department, a lot of storage space is needed uh, for keeping plans and drawings. And I hope that in uh, the light of uh, the actual needs of uh, departments, the government can provide more storage space and facilities. And for the West Kowloon government offices, regionally, a uh, canteen uh, was uh, planned, but because of objection from the local community, it is now uh, cancelled. And then uh, on the Hong Kong port area of the Hong Kong Chuan Macau Bridge, colleagues there do not have uh, uh, places to eat because of a lack of uh, F and B facilities. In fact, the government has the duty to provide canteen services for civil servants working in rather remote areas. For instance, the government can consider allowing social enterprises to operate canteens to uh, serve civil servants, and it can also help to promote the service of social enterprises. Another area is uh, training and continuing education. In the private sector, uh, staff members can um, uh, add value to themselves by continuing education and training, and then they can also have uh, higher promotional prospects, and they can also look for better jobs in uh, other companies. However, for the civil service, this is a bit different, and I think the government should uh, provide more proactive opportunities for civil servants to improve themselves. And uh, it's always better to uh, see, to, to acquire knowledge uh, by uh, traveling, and uh, civil servants may be able to benefit more by duty visits, in duty visits than engaging in training courses. However, the government is too stringent in allowing or uh, in approving leave uh, for civil servants from the professional grace, in particular in going on uh, overseas visits. Unless uh, the visits are directly related to their jobs, it is very hard for them to get their leave approved. In fact, uh, Professional civil servants can um, learn a lot in visiting governments of overseas governments, and they can learn from uh, their practice, and they can benefit a lot. I hope the secretary can consider relaxing the rules in this regard. Well, on the question of uh, pay and manpower of uh, the civil service, I'd like to uh, dwell into two more complicated issues. For many civil servants in the professional grades, maybe because of a change of their interests or they may want to change their uh, work environment, they may apply to join in other departments. As soon as uh, the application is approved, the uh, regional department will have to keep the post for one year to allow the uh, civil servant uh, to come back to the previous post. And as a result, for at least one year, the department will be one officer short, and other colleagues are required to double up. 
and if after one year the uh, civil servant has decided not to return to the original department, then it will be a few months at least before the position can be filled. I'm of the view that the uh, period for keeping the post vacant should be shortened to at least uh, six months. I think six months is good enough for uh, someone to um, find out whether he really wants to take up another post. And for some posts, the educational qualifications are the same as what it was many years ago. For instance, uh, the uh, qualification is still secondary school leaver, but in fact, uh, people with a bachelor degree or even master degree may apply for uh, these positions. And after working there for a while, they may feel that uh, they the job they are overqualified by the job as a result uh, the the sense of belonging and even the performance may suffer i understand that the secretary is uh, carrying out a study to see how we can best utilize our manpower resources and i think we should enhance the efficiency of the civil service, and we should promote and strengthen interbureau and interdepartmental cooperation and coordination. Now, uh, recently, we have uh, this uh, measure to hand out four thousand dollars in cash uh, under the caring care and share scheme, but uh, the government took eighteen months in preparation for the scheme. Perhaps a part of the time was spent on uh, tendering to set up the computer system. In fact, uh, whether it be the construction roads or flyovers, the actual construction may only take a couple of months, but uh, funding approval by the council and uh, tendering and advanced studies may take up to six to seven years. And sometimes, the uh, vetting procedures are too complicated, and as a result, uh, the time required to complete a project is much longer than is necessary, and that can have cost implications, and uh, that may affect uh, the interests and long-term benefits to Hong Kong. We are grateful to the uh, administration for introducing uh, two new codes of practice to standardize the vetting procedures. And uh, we have now a lead department as well as uh, the person in charge because sometimes uh, the delineation of uh, roles and responsibilities among departments are not clear. And uh, very often, a project may go uh, back and forth between a few departments wasting a lot of time and resources. The wetting procedures are now improved and enhanced, and that is a good start. I hope other bureaus and departments will follow suit. Please do not just uh, mind your own business. Rather, we should really maximize land resources and adopt the uh, single-site multiple-use model advocated by the CE. And the last part of my motion is to uh, promote or enhance the middle and senior civil servants' creative mindset and capacity to manage changes and to promote uh, the use of INT. To have a smart city, we need a smart government first. To make uh, policies um, smarter, then civil servants must be smarter and more creative in formulating policies. Many civil servants are minded to do that, but we're much slower than 
uh, the civil service in Singapore, South Korea, and even the mainland, for instance, to uh, upgrade uh, Windows uh, software, two years, uh, smart lampposts. Uh, we have uh, heard about that a long time, but have yet to seen one. And also handout of cash, it has also taken far too long. And uh, for uh, construction and maintenance and repair materials, uh, whenever we want to use innovative materials, civil servants will ask whether they have been used before. Now, for large-scale uh, planning studies and landscaping studies, now, uh, because uh, we will have a large uh, piece of land with the reclamation of land town, and uh, we sh must uh, tackle uh, such a subject with innovation and a creative mindset. Our civil service is uh, very competent and efficient, and they deserve the support of the whole community. I now propose the question that a motion moved by the Honorable Tony Zane be passed. Four members will move amendments to this motion. This council will conduct a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. I will call upon members who move amendments to speak in the following order. The Honorable Ho Kai Meng, the Honorable Charles Peter Mock, the Honorable Jeremy Tam, and the Honorable Holden Chow, but they may not move the mo amendments at this stage. Mr. Ho Kai Meng. Thank you, Deputy. Well, my amendments are largely in line with Tony Chess' original amendment. The purpose of my amendments is to target the civil service remuneration and manpower. A lot at our civil service union have told us over time that their aspirations have not been answered. In the past three years, the annual there are eighteen thousand retirements each year. And every time when and some retirement socialization, we congratulate them of leaving this hot kitchen. Well, maybe the secretary, since they're in the hot kitchen, they feel the, the heat, and the colleagues under you also quite feel uh, heated. The the civil service is just described that those who want outside want to be in, while those inside want to get out. This is sim a similar situation to them. So where are the signs? In 2017 to 18, for those at decline rate is at 14%, and 60% of them have left during probation. As soon as with public rising uh, demand for public services, there is increasing difficulty in recruitment, and especially the civil service we need to cope with the retirement peaks. So how can the civil service retain and attract the talent? will be a key issue. So I think government can take on board the views and emotions in terms of remuneration to make it more competitive so as to compete with the private sector. There are seven points in my amendment which are the long-term aspirations of our uh, civil service unions and especially on uh, remuneration. First will be about the a uh, pay real cost of increment deductions that have been discussed on the public service panel many times. The pay adjustment mechanism is to, to uh, ensure that there will uh, no uh, double pay rises. And we can see that this practice, for those who reach a maximum pay point, that would actually be unfair to them. The pay adjustment mechanism is based on the pay trends survey as the key indicator. Since the key indicator included the um, merit pay and bonuses of the uh, when they would trans they uh, how to avoid a double pay rises that the government will deduct the payroll cost of increments from the key uh, in the indicator before coming with a net indicator and uh, this net indicator have failed to take to account those of uh, maximum pay point this uh, they have reached the maximum pay point of several grades they could not have any further pay increments and yes under the gross indicator they have been deducted the payroll cost of increment which is a de facto pay cut or deducted pay increase 
while there were less new recruits in the past, their impact isn't at acute. Uh, we have more new people, recruits joining in. The percentage have get to about a two percent. As a how many of those in the civil service be affected? About uh, forty percent of those to as as seventy, seventy, and seventy five people have reached their maximum pay point. That would not be have a further um, point increments. Now, which thirty percent of the civil service are in the middle uh, ranks? So we can see that the pay payroll cost of increment deduction, especially on affecting those in middle and lower ranks. The government should address the pay inequity for the middle and lower ranks so as not to damage their morale, especially there are more experience. So how do we prefer the experience and help with the effective operation the government will be vital. And on the five day week implementation. The FTU thinks that the government should fully implement FFJ with our offices had already been practicing FDW for quite a few years. They would allow more rest time for us. Staff just imagine that you come back to office Saturday morning, there's nothing much to do and yet you have to uh, commute to office. And it was actually difficulty to hiring young people. Because we all hope to have more time to take a break or develop their own hobbies, and especially uh, Hong Kong have failed to have, have so, so few annual leaves per year. So these two rest days are important. While implementing the FTW, the government claims that they have to adopt uh, four basic principles, which is no with extra manpower resources, not uh, reducing the condition of work in hours, not reduction of emergency services, and maintain the essential counter services on weekend and public holidays. And since its implementation in 2006, about 25% or about 41,000 staff is not eligible uh, to work under the FDW arrangements. And the public service panel, we discussed it annually. And yet the conclusion is the same because there's no uh, new measures to take care of this uh, over 40,000 civil servants. Why can they could to convert in from five, six days to five day working week, work days? Well, the secretary may have heard us. Maybe the reason may some of the posts we have a chronic shortage of staff or that uh, are not able to roster for five days. These are administrative grounds. As long as the upper management had the determination to help the staff to uh, adjust to a five-week schedule, that could be achieved. And yet, uh, whether the uh, bureau or the department level, maybe, maybe the department chiefs are interested. When they get to the middle management, they may have been too busy or haven't had any new ideas or not familiar with the frontline thinking. They're not able to help those basic a junior and a workforce seems to arrange a five day roster for them. So I think that they will undermine the appeal of the civil service position, also led to the polarization of the workforce. I hope that the secretary can put more effort. For example, whether we can uh, have some special appeal channel of a front line have the idea I mean to have ideas on rostering and yet it would blocked by the middle management. What can they would provide you a direct feedback? What can, so can you can call uh, coordinate. So as the HR department for the entire government, that something can be done. And for the permanent post, the government need more permanent posts to stabilize the civil service and attract talent. And the post address uh, we should increase no less than three percent of civil servants. Uh, most of the uh, civil service concentrate on the discipline grade services and. Yet that there is seem not improved in other grades. Well, for the LCSD have a re hired over eighty permanent posts. Would they uh, really a uh, substantial enough to uh, improve their long standing issues? And and yet is already considered the most substantial among all departments. So how do we uh, solve the chronic shortage? I think we should take more drastic measures. And the government could quite some time. Have time to recruit uh, non civil service contract staff. Was well, note that the NCSC staff are five nil workers, which are the five nils? Not 
or they have no promotion, no fringe benefits, no pay increases, no protect job security, and no prospects. Currently, I have uh, 3,400 staff who have worked more than five years, even though they're not uh, civil servants, and yet they are de facto civil servants. They have a contract for five more years, but yet they're not able to be hired as civil servants, and that is not desirable. So when it comes to dealing with the NCIC staff, I hope they can work on three direct, four directions. So the government can uh, uh, hire those who work more than five years and turn them into civil servants. And for those who have been uh, proposing appraisals, should be able to give it increments as encouragement. And thirdly, this is a very uh, surprising. We still have over 10% of NCIC staff have uh, give well, they're not able to uh, claim their uh, sick leave if they take less than four days, which is a de facto pay deduction. That's come to outsource workers, and yet we subject this to uh, uh, the NCC staff, even though it's at over 10%. I hope that the uh, CSP can address this. And and for those on permanent contract, could also be entitled to public holidays in debt of labor holidays. Currently, about 10% 10, 10 of workers in this situation. Hope that the government to attract and retain talent they should st start from the fundamental to improve the remuneration and add more permanent posts and so submit. The Honorable Charles Peter Mock. Members of Beauty, first I want to thank Mr. Tony Z for moving this motion. Whenever we uh, talked about issues of the civil service, we focus on uh, pay and conditions of service. But today, uh, we can extend that discussion to matters of uh, um, public administration policies and how to equip our civil service to catch up times and to um, um, to make use of new technology. Now, from uh, the user's point of view, when we enhance the efficiency of public administration, we must focus on efficiency and innovation. We should get a, uh, do away with uh, no longer um, needed uh, red tapes. And when it comes to um, efficiency of public administration. I think the most uh, useful example is the handing out of $4,000 in cash. And uh, the uh, student uh, finance and subsidy office is dealing uh, with uh, 1,200 cases per day. However, we've got 3.4 million applications and only 110,000 um, cases have been successfully processed. In fact, uh, by using IT, the government might uh, be able to make savings, but it has uh, refused to do so. Even my ward office staff are saying that how difficult it is to uh, submit forms by um, online. And according to uh, Matthew Jung, it takes 18 months to develop such a system. The government has been spending hundreds of billions of dollars on uh, infrastructure. And then uh, it talked about a coordination of departments for use of INT, but the government is still, government department is still passing the box to one another, and they rather um, avoid innovation to avoid mistakes. They just want to uh, provide convenience to themselves and not to the public frontline officers. Uh, um, having a hard time, they have to follow the directions of their uh, senior officers, but often they take the blame from members of the public. So this is such a simple thing, and yet the government is so incompetent. This uh, shows that the government is bureaucratic and uh, very archaic. They don't really care about KPIs and efficiency. The government uh, like to sing praises of uh, Hong Kong's uh, use of technology and innovation. But this is not obvious to the public. When can we see uh, the advantages of um, the advantages of uh, the internet? We should um, be a well city, and we uh, should uh, show efficiency. I would told that 18 months is required, and according to uh, members from the industry, indeed it should be uh, 16 months because uh, you have to the tendering exercise, uh, vetting, and uh, there is only two months left for the contractor to deliver the um, product. Now. 
the government internally cannot develop the uh, system very rapidly. They always have to outsource because the government itself doesn't know how to do it. This cannot be. Even for very simple systems such as the uh, care and sharing scheme, the government should have to keep the the ability to develop their own system. Many large enterprises are doing that, and yet the government isn't. So this is an ex a lesson for us to learn. We must make uh, the equip the civil service to uh, tap the convenience and uh, efficiency brought about by innovation and technology. We m many digital services provided by the government are still using, relatively speaking, old um, uh, technologies such as Java. And every time it has to develop a dedicated new system, retendering another round of redevelopment, and members of the public has to input um, information again. Now, we like to compare with Singapore, our competitor. They have a reform of e-government many years ago. For instance, government Blueprint will provide various services to suit the needs of its nationals and enterprises. In uh, 2016, it provides a one-stop service so that uh, there is a platform for different licensing services. So in Hong Kong, you want to look for government subsidies, and you have to uh, look at uh, the web pages of uh, different government departments before you can tell what is available for SMEs. So. How can we live up to the uh, changed, changing expectations of the community? Singapore has launched this. They have developed a shared use of IT tools so that at a low cost and efficient manner, they can uh, offer this application moments of life. It is totally user-oriented. Government information is uh, integrated services for uh, childcare services, family services, and there is also uh, laboratories uh, for user experience. So the government departments know how to improve their services and their websites. Uh, whereas in Hong Kong, uh, the government has no idea what it wants to do. It may spend tens of uh, hundreds of millions of of thousands of dollars on develop uh, an app with very low uh, utilization. And we should also uh, train the civil service in uh, the use of IT. Uh, we must improve the situation. By 2023, uh, the Singapore government would have completed the training of uh, 2 million civil servants. And uh, the, surf the training is being done by its university. And there will also be a scholarship uh, for a smart country to nurture IT engineers among young people. The problem is, can our government attract the smartest young people to join, uh, as join it? The government is still um, outsourcing its IT jobs. It is not giving professional recognition to IT staff, so it cannot attract high caliber talents. And how can it turn Hong Kong to a smart city and really go through this um, IT transformation? And government policies will affect many industries. It likes outsourcing. FTU uh, talked about NCSC, uh, non civil service uh, contract staff. In fact, uh, many IT staff or IT professional would rather be NCSC staff because they are still um, employees of uh, companies with T contracts from the government. We thank the OGCIO. Because uh, bit by bit, it is improving the situation. Still, the problem is. When compared with uh, members of the same team, uh, these uh, uh, T contract staff will wonder how come civil servants are so much better paid than they are while they're doing the same job. So how can you call them uh, uh, engaged in shops of uh, needed in short term work when they have to work in the job for more than 10 years? Now, I have uh, raised this with the government many, many times, and yet many new IT posts are still being filled by uh, T contract staff. 
and the government has also cut some positions. So uh, those uh, who are more experienced uh, will be cut, and they uh, may say that uh, T contract posts are being cut to address uh, the aspirations of the community. It's not like the hospital authority. They allow contract staff to uh, t take up permanent posts. We must change the whole system so that young people will not feel that uh, if I uh, can only be a contract staff with the government or in the private sector, I don't want to join this sector. So we must improve the system and enhance training for civil servants. We should follow the system of the UK and Singapore. The UK has got a government digital service. They have a GDS Academy. They have a data science and salary system. There is an interdepartmental arrangement to promote uh, digital innovation. And they have also got a tailor-made 10-week uh, training course uh, for civil servants. It's not just, uh, it's not like our one or two seminars for civil servants. There, the uh, civil servants are better trained to promote smart city. We must um, instill uh, this sense of innovation into our civil servants, and there must be sufficient training tools. Otherwise, if we do not adopt uh, this uh, bottom-down approach, then uh, the civil service will want to um, want to keep current practices for the sake of stability, and then we'll continue to have more cases like the four thousand dollars a handout scheme. Thank you, Mr. Jeremy Tam. Thank you. The last governor of Hong Kong, Mr. Chris Ben, once said that Hong Kong's civil service is one of the best civil um, service in the world. So we can see that um, to members of the public, the civil service is professional, neutral, and efficient. But today, um, following all the scandals, we see that the core values of the civil service have been eroded. I'm sure many people would agree that the civil service is clean and law-abiding, but if we still want to claim that we have a politically neutral civil service, um, it would be hard to convince the people of Hong Kong. The objective of my amendment is to free the 117,000 strong civil service from political pressure so that they can fulfill their duties in a neutral manner. According to the civil service code, the civil service must be politically neutral. So when discharging their public duties, they cannot be affected or influenced or dictated by their political party belief or affiliation. In other words, when discharging duties, civil servants should not be partial, whether they are blue ribbons or yellow ribbons. The civil servants should discharge their duties in an impartial manner in accordance with the law. So this is common sense and um, a common expectation by the public towards civil servants. However, the government likes to um, ask the civil servants to um, fulfill political missions. The returning officer arbitrarily disqualified our candidates to the election. The Education Bureau has amended our textbooks and they have indirectly promoted national education while the Immigration Department arbitrarily rejected entry by participants of a social of um, social movements and visas have been rejected even Hong Kong Post has been infiltrated. They refuse to mail the alleged promotional circulars from the opposition. Ahead of the June 4th 
vigil last night. Many political parties were able to discuss June 4th through the notice boards of the district councillors, but yet um, they were screened out. Civil servants are no longer political, politically neutral. Instead, they have to consider what their superiors would think, and they are self-censoring. And um, if they do not fulfill political missions, their careers would be under threat. For instance, um, they might be rejected a contract renewal. Um, their um, records might be blemished by their superiors. So the common expectation that or common sense that civil servants should be politically neutral is no longer the case. The government is now asking the civil servants to attend the course on national affairs, including the course on national affairs taught in the party school of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. There are a few types of courses. Directorate staff would attend courses offered by the party school of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. Senior officials of the Central People's Government would be the instructors, while other senior officials would attend courses on national affairs organized by Tsinghua University or Peking University, while the middle level um, civil servants would attend courses run by Zhongshan University. You might say that the civil service need to know about national development. But unfortunately, uh, this is not at the core of these national affairs courses. In terms of understanding and coordinating each other's work, I am not against the idea at all. I am certainly supportive. Unfortunately, um, this is not what is being taught in these courses. Some media reports pointed out that participants to these courses were asked to um, visit the um, uh, Chenggang San, um, the origin of the revolution. Why do Hong Kong civil servants have to visit the mainland to check or visit the um, roots of the agricultural revolutions. We are we want to learn about national affairs but not party affairs. We want to know about the hierarchy and structure of the central government. But um the fact is our civil servants are learning about the party, their history, the mission of the party, the aspirations of the party. What do all these have to do with our civil servants. Civil servants in the mainland um, are not subject to political neutrality. Or should I put it this way? Civil servants in the mainland can never be politically neutral. They must listen to party instructions instead of instructions from the country. This is against the spirit of Hong Kong civil service, yet we are sending them to the mainland to attend these national affairs courses when they are actually um, party affairs courses. Even for civil servants who have nothing to do with mainland affairs, such as frontline healthcare workers, they are forced to participate in these courses. While for an A&E doctor, what do they have to do with national affairs? Of course, in the main in the mainland, um, doctors would ask you to pay up before you can receive treatment. So, uh, are you trying to educate our doctors with such philosophy? Our frontline workers are in short supply. So, for the government, understanding national affairs or party affairs would be more important than saving lives. I wonder whether 
attending these courses would help frontline healthcare workers treat more people. This is absurd. Our civil servants do not need to attend these um, brainwashing national affairs courses. So I request the government to abolish these courses in my amendment. And I'm pinpointing the brainwashing national affairs courses for um, visits of a collaborative nature. They are not an issue. I'm only against courses on party affairs. These courses on national affairs should be abolished and the civil service code should be enforced in a strict manner so that civil servants can be free from political pressure and they can work in a neutral and professional environment. I urge members to support my amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Holden Chow. Madam Deputy, first I would like to thank Mr. Chair for moving the motion so to provide a platform to our colleagues to discuss how do we improve the employment term of civil servants, enhancing the efficiency, policy implementation, and promoting creativity and innovation. For the, uh, well, the DB agrees with the original motion, and since we have the opportunity to discuss that, I think we can further re a more specific and urge we can urge the administration to improve and also to reflect the concern of civil service uh, unions. The following time I would like to elaborate on my proposed amendments. Uh, recently the government continued to launch new initiatives and, and thought that the government where well, the public had high expectation of pu and demand for public services, the government would need to increase the establishment and the strength, and yet the, the retirement brought by the aging population, the civil service organizations and what in the expansion of the civil service strength need to face with a rising wastage. As of 2018 March, the establishment even though had increased by uh, 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 $178,000, and yet the actual strength is at 171,000, that about uh, 7,000 vacancies. And to fill up the vacancies, uh, recruiting staff is one way. And extending the retirement age, reducing wastage, will see uh, more uh, targeted measures. According to the CSB figures, that the retirement is the biggest cause of wastage. In 2017-18, there were about uh, 6,500 civil servants retiring, which is a 15-year high. Even though the administration have announced a twice extending the retirement age, and simply to cope with uh, those um, who entered the force on June 1st, 2000, and most of these have yet to reach retirement, and which are not the group that that would face the highest wastage. Extending the retirement wage can re reduce the wastage 10 to f 8 years ahead, but it cannot offer immediate relief. Thus, in my amendment, I propose extending the retirement age uh, those uh, entered before 1st June 2000, which we call as the old system. Stocking on wastage rate is, is that discipline grades uh, soft for the most severe shortage. For example, police, uh, CNE, CSD, and fire service department must conduct year-round recruitment to deal with the staff shortages. Look at the figures excluding the ICAC. The six discipline uh, forces there have a higher wastage in overall civil service, and those in rank and file is quite severe. For example, CSD and the CNE. In 2018-19, the wastage rate is at 70.5 uh, and 5.1 percent, respectively. And for some part, uh, part of the problem having to do with retirement age, according to the staff side uh, unions of, of, of the uh, discipline services, that remuneration is a weighing factor for wastage. Compared to civilian grades, the discipline services need to cope with more challenging 
a work environment and to take on work stress and also need to face danger. Also, they are bound by discipline and rushed to work and on call duties. Thus, in the past, the civilian services have their own uh, grade structure and pay scale. And since the uh, unique nature of discipline services, when improving remuneration, there are uh, no uh, comparators in the private market, unlike the civilian grades. Even though that the a great structure review on this purpose can do akin to a pay survey, so as to comprehensively to adjust the pay structure, scale and rhythm, and the uh, great structure, but therefore not a regular review. Thus, the adjustment mechanism often uh, lag behind the actual circumstances. After years of of lobbying, the XCN Council had proposed that we conduct a GSR on the discipline services every once in a decade. It's just simply too long. How many decades do you all live for? Uh, and on notwithstanding that the discipline services need to retire five years early, and for civilian grades, they will conduct a great transfer every six year to ensure that the civil service or pay are broadly comparable to the private sector, and. So the GSR for a similar discipline service is packed at one every decade instead of one every six. And the GSL for group discipline services have been quite discussed on uh, way back for the st Standing Committee on Discipline Services Salary and Conditional Service Report, SCDS. Back then, they already proposed one review every six years to align that with civilian grades. Since the administration accepts the SCDS report, but why do you adopt some of the suggestions but not others? So as I see that my amendment, I hope that uh, this regular review demand, hope that the secretary can reconsider and respond to the reasonable aspiration from the staff side. Well, due to time constraints, I want to focus on the courses on national affairs. Hong Kong advantages in a one country, two system. To leverage on the two system while reinforcing our knowledge of the country, we must first grasp on the national development opportunities, as well as know we know well about the central level support, and the civil service will need to uh, less development when executing policy. For example, the Greater uh, Bay Area and Well and Road Initiatives policies. If the civil service know more about the national development and national affairs, they will able to accurately implement the policies to leverage our advantages as to enhance our own competitiveness. I must point out, in last October, the audit department have exposed that the CSB have stressed the importance of national affairs, and yet the target for the uh, participation for course of national affairs have fallen way short of target. The quote is, is not enough and for 2001 to 2011 since it's launched about 3,000 who took part on the national affairs courses. And there's a same significant gap between the number of actual participants. The CSB have improved the quotas to 450 per year and speak of now those who haven't joined about the 13,000 middle layer civil service, I just wonder how long to we take to clear the backlog. I hope the uh, secretary in his response can outline any measures can facilitate the middle uh, rank civil servants to uh, participate in the courses so as to uh, take forward this area of work. I noticed that the Mr. Jeremy Tam highlighted that it would abolish the national affairs courses, as he claimed that these courses would affect the political neutrality and professionalism. On the amendment by Jeremy Tam, DAB would object the contents of the national affairs courses and comprehensively introduce the uh, political, economic, and cultural development. Also, it introduced a smart city, INT, big data, and the uh, GBA opportunities. Why would it uh, ac accuse this content would affect the civil service neutrality and their professionalism? I believe that dealing with the uh, GDP area, we need to uh, closely liaise with the mainland authorities and then to understand the policy development of the central government. As I heard, Mr. Jeremy Tam, 
that some of the national affairs causes some of the content right, w w would affect political neutrality. Put it this way. Regardless of the content of the national affairs, no, or just to know about history, uh, I don't see uh, 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 as you said, brainwashing. Well, for civil service taking part of this at NACs, I believe they're on in critical thinking. I believe, I think, I hope that Mr. Jeremy Tam should not uh, label and smear them. So I've and seem to equate the national affair causes to brainwashing. This is a serious accusation. All that you should not uh, see the current causes on offer with tinted lenses, so as to let the civil service know about the national development and the uh, various uh, policies, infrastructure. I so submit. Secretary for the civil service. Madam Deputy, first of all, I thank Mr. Paul Chair and other members for moving the motion and amendments, and I thank them for allowing me to explain the government's policy initiatives with regards to the areas covered in the motion. In terms of recommendations to improve civil service terms mentioned in the original motion and amendments covering establishment, remuneration policy, health care and housing benefits, training, etc. I would first like to illustrate the government's policy direction in terms of civil service affairs. The civil service are the cornerstone of the government and they have always strived for quality and have been providing quality services in a people-oriented manner. Since the current term administration assumed office, a number of new measures and initiatives were introduced. I'd like to thank the civil service for their efforts and for wholeheartedly implementing such work. As employer, the government has embraced the chief executive mandate of care, listen and act. Apart from suitably increasing manpower, we also understand the needs of the civil service and we have paid attention to their welfare while enhancing training. At the same time, we provide appropriate remuneration packages to appeal to and retain talent. Through an established mechanism, we have maintained close communication with the staff side to listen to their views. Our goal is to maintain a professional, efficient and stable civil service to support the government's policy making. As for the cross bureau and departmental collaboration, which some members talked about, the current term administration set up the Policy Innovation and Coordination Office or PICO on the 1st of April last year to enhance cooperation and coordination between the policy research and innovative departments and to aid with the policy making across bureaus and enhance collaboration. When the policy bureaus and departments make and execute policies, they would embrace collaboration for the interests of the society. In terms of promoting innovation and creativity, we can see that the government is actively promoting smart city, including a smart government, promoting the application and research of innovative technologies within departments are among the focus of the government. The Innovation and Technology Bureau set up Tech Connect block vote in the middle of 2017 to support the planning and implementation of technology projects in different government departments so that technology can be deployed to enhance efficiency and improve public services. Through a string of other measures, the government also seeks to enhance the application and research of innovation and technology among government departments. We also pay attention to the training of civil servants on different levels in terms of their innovative spirit and application of technology. Innovation and technology 
has been added to many courses, and the government is adopting a multi-pronged approach to enhance the innovative spirit and application of technology by civil servants to support the promotion of Hong Kong's smart city blueprint and innovation of services. Members would know that we are actively planning for a new civil service academy to provide new facilities for civil service training. This would further enhance the capabilities of the civil service in terms of leadership, global perspectives, and application of technology. In terms of civil service training, I stress that the government places great attention to national affairs training for the civil service. Mr. Jeremy Tam's amendment proposed abolishing the arrangement for civil servants to attend courses on national affairs. We do not agree with the proposal. Civil servants have an actual um, working need to understand the social development and economy of the mainland as well as their political system and government hierarchy so that they would understand the possible impacts on Hong Kong's of Hong Kong's role in terms of the national strategy. That way they can um, be up to date with the latest information. The Ban Road Initiative and Greater Bay Area Development are obvious examples. Civil servants must understand the macro policies and latest developments of a nation so that Hong Kong can better grasp these opportunities. Some members query that the causes on national affairs might affect the political neutrality of the civil service. I wish to point out that a politically neutral civil service refers to the fact that regardless of the political stance of the civil servants, they must be loyal to the SAR government and chief executive in discharging their duties. And in doing so, they cannot be influenced or di dictated by their political belief or affiliation. I stress that all civil servants abide by the law and they are politically neutral. And um, all enforcement um, officials in the civil service would um, embrace the principle of political neutrality when discharging their duties. Madam Deputy, I would um, listen to views from members before I offer a more detailed response. Thank you. Mr. Lo Wai Kwok. Madam Deputy, first I want to thank Mr. Tony C for moving the motion on improving the employment terms of civil servants, enhancing the efficiency of policy implementation, promoting creativity and innovation, all sectors of society would support to properly implement policies of the government re rely on a team of uh, outstanding civil service. Now, they have been dedicated, and everyone in Hong Kong knows that the world is ever-changing, and people have ever-changing and rising expectations for performance of the civil service. With changes in uh, socially and politically, uh, the um, nature of civil servants' workload have changed. For instance, uh, the PWSC uh, items is now a place of uh, political wrangling between the government and also uh, the um, uh, opposition camp. Uh, Many projects involve medical and health care, education, social welfare, travel infrastructure. They have wide implications on people's livelihood. The filibustering has added the, to the workload of professional grades. They must uh, be very conversant with uh, various um, public works projects. They have to communicate with different sectors of society and uh, secure the support of um, legislators. 
Now, I fully understand uh, the ever-increasing workload of uh, civil servants. So I have uh, said to the uh, CS and FS a number of times to face up to these problems, and the uh, strength of professional grade should be reviewed on a regular basis to see whether they should be boosted or not. I understand that there will be uh, 3,000 more posts or 1.8 percent increase in the uh, works department establishment. Among the newly added posts, some of them are in the works and uh, construction uh, departments, accounting for 5% of uh, the uh, strength of the EMST, ASD, TD, Highways Department, and the Environment Department, Environmental Protection Department. And the Secretary uh, said that in the light of different stages of uh, public works, professional staff will be added to appropriate departments. I hope this will help the planning and a level of monitoring and implementation of public works. The government should appropriately boost the establishment of uh, different departments of the civil service, and it should also review the training of different levels of civil servants and the training pros and the promotional prospects to implement P uh, public works. The government should review the uh, division of labor among relevant departments. More resources should be provided in order there would be sufficient uh, strength and establishment when it comes to professional grades for better cost control and coordination and communication. So as uh, to uh, um, uh, f for better risk management to ensure the quality and safety of works to uh, respond to the aspirations and expectations of society. Because uh, the civil service will see uh, the peak of uh, retirement very soon in order to avoid any uh, gaps within the civil service, we must attach significance to training of younger civil servants. There should be a more uh, permanent posts, and there should be more financial support for them, and there should be a proper promotional ladder to attract and retain talents to uh, boost uh, the um, bank of professional staff in the civil service so that there can be sustainable development. In order to have good governance, it is necessary to enhance training for civil servants. In 2018, the CE said in a policy address that an advisory committee on uh, civil service training will be set up, and then uh, a site has been identified in Kuntong for construction of a new civil service college. I hope that the um, preparation can be over as soon as possible, and they should come to Letco for funding so that uh, the new college can be commissioned in 2026. However, the content of training should be updated to catch up with uh, new developments. First, uh, to expedite the development of a smart city and to promote e-government, civil servants should be encouraged to um, display creativity and use INT. There should be training in communication, communication skills, for instance, how to handle the media and uh, how to, um, uh, to um, communicate with uh, legislators and uh, the ability to deal with uh, crisis. Mr. Jeremy Tam's amendment would like the administration to uh, abolish the current arrangement for civil servants to attend the course on national affairs in the mainland. We beg to differ with the view that this course should be boosted so that civil service can have a better understanding of the development and positioning of the country so that they can um, give full play to the potential and advantages of Hong Kong and we should grasp the opportunities brought about by the Belt and Road Initiative and the Greater Bay Area Development. Thank you. Mr. Lang Yu Chong.
Madam Deputy, at least uh, six uh, civil service organ associations have written to uh, Carrie Lam to show their support for the amendments to the Fugitive Offenders Ordinance to urge the administration to uh, expedite the protest ASAP. There were strong repercussions within the civil service. Uh, the media have approached or has received complaints from uh, the FSD and other DSC who have claimed that they have uh, been wrongly represented by their staff associations, and that is against uh, the principle of neutrality of the civil service. And uh, the C's office is suspected to have uh, pressurized uh, civil service organizations, urging them uh, to uh, show their support for the government. The C E wants to um, uh, to uh, rush through the uh, legislation and. Uh, it has uh, told she has totally forgotten the rule for civil servants to remain neutral. She has entirely undermined or destroyed the professionalism of the civil service. This is a big disservice to the community of Hong Kong, and in fact, it's a crime. And then. In the dispute over the amendments to the FOO civil servants, uh, the or government bodies and quasi government bodies have uh, favored the pro establishment camp and the government. In order to protect their rice bowls, they have to show their uh, loyalty to the government, and now they are a tools of the government for its. Governance and this is uh, very uh, saddening. The civil service has, is always the pride of Hong Kong, but because of um, the uh, behavior of the CE, the FS, and uh, the CS, now they have got scandals involving uh, corruption, bribery, and unauthorized structures, and uh, also currying favor from the uh, Chinese liaison office, and they uh, have never admitted to what they have done, and people uh, feel that the neutrality and impartiality of the civil service have been um, eroded. Therefore, I support Mr. Jeremy Tam's amendment to abolish uh, the course on national affairs for civil servants to attend, in particular, the course run by the party school of the Central Committee of the CPC because they've made it difficult for the civil service to remain political neutrality. I think the civil service code indeed should be strictly enforced to enable civil servants to work under politically neutral and professional environment and to discharge their duties of an unfair of an impartial, fair, and equitable attitude. In fact, uh, the only boss the civil service has is uh, uh, the people of Hong Kong. Uh, it does not that the Chinese nation office uh, should be the boss, as felt by some of us here. Mr. Holden Charles Amendment uh, would like to enhance the civil service understanding of uh, one country, two systems, uh, the basic uh, national affairs. I think uh, such an idea uh, goes against the principle of uh, political neutrality of the civil service and should not be supported. Now, for the uh, pay and conditions of service of uh, basic rank civil servants, now every year, uh, the uh, civil service paid a adjustment of uh, the lower band of civil servants after adjustment will not be too different from what their senior colleagues get in by percentage terms, but because of the lower base they have, uh, the uh, actual amount they get is uh, very different, and uh, the uh, 
increments they get are also very different. For instance, for senior civil servants, by uh, increasing by one increment point, they get a few thousand dollars more. But for uh, lower band civil servants, they only get a few hundreds more. And very often, uh, the salary, salary uh, scales of um, lower band civil servants is much shorter and uh, after they have reached their maximum point, they can only rely on their annual pay adjustment. Whereas for senior civil servants, they have more chance of getting an increment, and as a result, uh, their um, salary is much, much more higher than their junior, uh, senior, uh, junior counterparts. And therefore, this has uh, widened the wealth gap. Therefore, we must uh, adjust the pay adjustment service system of the civil service. For the lower band of civil servants, uh, we should not re we should not uh, deduct the payroll cost of increments for their pay adjustment every year. And as for uh, this extend extended uh, employment after retirement, I think that should apply to both the old and new pension scheme civil servants and civil servants uh, should be given the choice to retire at either 65 or 60. It is not fair that we impose a mandatory retirement age for the civil servants. I think everyone should be allowed to choose when he is going to retire. It should not be imposed on him by the government. And so for civil servants, they should be allowed to choose when they retire, whether 60 or 65. Thank you. Pun Xu Ping. Deputy, um, the civil service is the backbone to support the government and its policy administration. And yet the public will hire expectations of public service and severe polarization in the society will put huge pressure on the civil service. Thus, this motion provides opportunity to focus on the uh, remuneration of civil service, express the views of various civil service associations so that the government can take on board the, any beneficial views, which is effective in raising morale and also be conducive to governance. On manpower, I welcome the government to expand the civil service establishment to 2018-19 and to 2019-20. They were uh, respectively uh, increased by uh, 6,700 and 3,400 positions. And yet, uh, a lot of questions remain. In the past, the government have had the impression of creating directorate positions, but uh, less recruitment of frontline workers. But in the face of a myriad of public services, the uh, frank and foul civil service are at the front line. Their service quality directly affect the public perception of the government. And how to reduce the work stress of the frontline workers so as not to uh, benefit the top as expense of the bottom would be the key, key of improving public services. The future manpower planning would also my focus. Um, the civil service association that I've been contacted asked for uh, expanding the eligibility for a, a, the retirement age to old system civil service so that they can choose to extend the retirement age. On the government proposal to raise the eligibility rate for elderly season age to 60 to 65, then they claim that there are still uh, uh, productivity between those in 60 to 65. The old system civil service is belong part of this group, and this civil service group are considered an experienced ones. Retaining them can help to pass on the experience and knowledge. Help that the government can consider such arrangements. And Madam Deputy, the number of civil service resignees is on the rise year after year. The cost is subject to speculation. However, it might be related to remuneration terms. The year 2000 is the watershed on civil service employment conditions. It's also the uh, 
at the uh, breakout point for where they extend retirement age, and also the uh, the cutoff line for those who have joined afterwards cannot be eligible for post retirement medical and dental benefits. In the past, the fresh graduates would join the government. Besides works to security, they also provide a comprehensive and long-term medical benefits to attract talent. The administration should review the post-retirement dental and medical benefits so that those who have been served in a number of years will be eligible to post-retirement medical and dental benefits so as to add to the sense of belonging. And on terms of pay, the government would deduct the payroll cost of increment from the gross indicator and the net pay survey indicator as the basis for the pay increases. These associations claim this is unfair to those on maximum pay point. And now there are 30,000 civil servants currently on their maximum payments for 10 years or both, which made up 18% of the total civil service. This is effectively a pay cut and damaging to their morale. Madam Deputy, and when the government implementing the FDW since 2006, a decade on, there's still about 25% of civil service does not benefit from this policy. As reflected by some of the civil service associations, some department have the, the upward and middle ranks are in five day week, and yet the lower ranks, the joint rank and file are in uh, six day week, which led to uh, this dissatisfaction. How to rationalize the five day week so as the entire workforce on a five day week schedule will be the direction the government must embark on. May I suggest that the CSB more proactively instigate the cost? Why is the department able to fully implement the FDW arrangement? Especially some of the departments in which the upward and middle management are on the FDW, while the frontline workers are still subject to six day work week. Where lies the problem? The government also uh, review the four principles on implementing FDW so as to all allow the departments to have great discretion to deal with the manpower and resources so that the public services uh, we've maintained on Saturday and Sundays while we're fully implementing the FDW so that um, the civil service will be given the same treatment. Madam Deputy, I must mention about Chinese medicine. Well, uh, just uh, when the public health care system is on the verge of collapse, we we'll divert some of that to the Chinese medicine clinic would it consider a viable solution. I hope that the government can early implement the development of the Chinese medicine sector so as to respond to the long-standing aspirations of the civil service and set an example of the good employer. The government as the biggest employer in Hong Kong it would um, play the role of the pioneer to judge, to let, to have the private sector to follow its lead. And as a member for the Labour constituency, hopefully improving the condition of service by the civil service so as the private sector will emulate to improve the overall employee in, uh, is, uh, welfare. I so submit. Christopher Chung. Madam Deputy. First, I'd like to thank Mr. Tony Chair for moving this motion for our discussion. Hong Kong nowadays is a vastly politicized environment. The work of the civil service is more challenging. And also the public had a higher expectations of public service and how to improve the communication with the public and engagement will require the utmost dedication. For the hundreds of thousands of civil servants are truly the stabilizing bedrock of our society. The Lausanne IMD have entered the 2019 Global Competitive Report. Even though Hong Kong is a second, it's worth noting that in terms of the government efficiency, have been a top five years in a row. Is due to the 
our effort of our civil service team. Living in the era of big data, when the government is fully taking on steam the smart city development, in terms of technology development, the pressure only expect to grow. The public and the business sector will expect the business government efficiency can further be enhanced. Thus, uh, we must provide adequate support and training for the civil servants, and especially on national policy on the Belt and Road initiatives and on the Greater Bay Area. They must have a thorough understanding in order to move in pace with the times and equip ourselves. And also, they can able to provide a higher quality and more efficiency and uh, appropriate public service to the public and the businesses. Like I said, the whole society is getting more politicized. And the civil service work is more challenging than ever before, but we still can see that there are still uh, uh, step to job and not duties and, and able to fulfill that dedicate to their duties and must deserve our kudos and especially the frontline office police officers and disciplined forces even in the face of, of various um, uh, confrontations or unreasonable provocations they remain steadfast to their duties in protecting the property of the public. Thus, I support the, uh, uh, the discussion on the review of their remuneration to uh, uh, create a pay scale that demonstrates uh, pay indicators that reflect their duties. We have an aging population. And the shortage workforce, I support the civil service, including the frontline police officers, to uh, ha enhance their retirement flexibility, to allow them to to delay their retirement age to continue serving the public. As long as the public servant is in good health and the department has such a need, and they have always such desire, they can extend the retirement age to 60 or 65. By today's standards, not a lot of people will see that uh, those over 60 are seniors. I hope the government take the lead to encourage the private sector to extend the retirement age. And also would help to alleviate um, aging workforce and an impact on our society. Uh, Jeremy Tam, in, in his amendment to uh, propose abolishing the arrangements of attending the course of national affairs, he has been biased and, uh, for anything that to do with central government for any dialogue or communication to enhance the uh, national understanding will be regarded as brainwashing yeah. and will compromise their political neutrality. He is simply underestimating the wisdom of our civil servants. Apparently, he failed to see that 40 years of the opening up of China had seen remarkable achievements and failed to notice that the prospect for Belt and Road and the GBA. He lost his direction and spurred his head in the sand. Since I'm not able to support his amendment, I, 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 support, I uh, support Tony Chess and other amendments. Mr. Ma Fong Kwok. Madam Deputy, I speak to support Mr. Tony C's motion. Our civil service is famous for its high efficiency and integrity. They are responsible for a range of services, um, immigration, medical, health care, welfare, environmental hygiene, and so forth. We have a strength of over 170,000 in the civil service. 
being such a big team, the government has a responsibility to improve uh, the employment terms of the civil servants from time to time to enhance their high quality and uh, uphold their morale. The purpose of our civil service policy is to provide sufficient attraction to uh, to um, recruit and retain outstanding persons to serve in the civil service. Now, from on a regular basis, the government conducts uh, surveys, and that is uh, the pay level survey. However, that doesn't include uh, people who served. Dr. K. K. Kwok, I want more members to come back to listen to Mr. K. Ma Fung Kwok. We don't have a quorum.
馬鳳閣議員。Mr. 馬鳳閣。Mr. Ma Fong Kwok, President, I take the discipline services example because uh, there are no similar posts in the private sector. A comparison cannot be included in the pay level survey. The discipline services have a very uh, their job day nature is dangerous. They face uh, difficulties, and the last time uh, there was a great structure. Review done for them was in 2008. It was until last year that the CE promised to do a great structural review for them. Now, in 2018 19, uh, for um, the CSD, the waste stage range is as high as 7% as seven the highest amount of disciplined services. And they, uh, the di different discipline services have their own concerns in the great structural review of whether uh, we should adopt a cross-the-board approach or we should be careful because uh, the uh, structure and organization of different discipline services are unique to cater for their different nature. And therefore, uh, we must not do anything that will uh, deal a blow to their morale and polarize them. We should give careful consideration to the uh, special circumstances and unique work job nature of discipline services and the aspiration should be reflected in the coming GSR. In addition to improving existing grades, the government should also improve uh, or review the uh, impact of uh, contract staff and permanent staff on services. Take the LCSD as an example. Um, the, uh, Vacancies among lifeguards are always high in the summer. Sometimes swimming pools and even uh, have to be closed, uh, and uh, beaches do not have uh, lifeguard services. Uh, this is because of uh, a reduction in the uh, establishment of some uh, grades uh, by 20%. I understand that uh, the LCSC would like to employ contract lifeguards uh, on a seasonal basis. But this will affect servers if, as a result, members of the public cannot uh, use uh, these facilities or if the facilities are idle, then it is also a waste of public resources. The government should uh, improve great structures and enhance permanent posts where necessary. The uh, amendments include a number of measures, for instance, extending the um, Retirement arrangement to uh, those employed before a certain deadline. Now, because uh, the peak of civil service retirement is coming, and therefore well, we should give consideration to this proposal. As we're enhancing the professional status of IT staff, uh, strengthening uh, the civil service grasp of innovation technology and promotion of e services, so and so forth, I think the government should work harder to implement these measures. There is a proposal to abolish the um, requirement for civil servants to attend course on national affairs. Hong Kong is an in alienable part of the country, and our future is closely tied to that of the country. Therefore, civil servants of the Hong Kong ICL should have a good grasp of the new developments associated with the country, and we should support the development of a country and also um, leverage on our advantages to achieve a women situation. Understanding of the basic law and better understanding of the system and institutions of the country is also necessary for civil servants. The country is um, moving ahead in different areas and it's not just uh, the civil service, even Ordinary members of the public, the young people in particular, should have a good understanding of the country. As our country grows stronger, so is its influence. The whole world uh, is hoping to better understand our country, and therefore the proposal to abolish uh, the requirement for civil servants to attend course on national affairs is uh, ignorant and maybe ulteriorly, maybe ulteriorly motivated, 
and the government should allow civil servants of different grades and ranks to attend different programs and we can have targeted training for some of them. Lastly, I'd like to talk about innovation and enhancing efficiency of the government. Last year, Super Typhoon Mankut attacked Hong Kong. 30 bureaus and departments were coordinated to uh, take care of the aftermath. Well, um, some, I think, uh, there was room for improvement in their work. For instance, uh, some fallen trees took a month to clear, and this has caused people to doubt uh, the ability of the government to deal with emergencies. And we should also enhance our civil service ability to uh, use innovative technology. Hong Kong is behind many countries in many regards. Your time is up. Thank you. Mr. Chan Kim Po, our civil servants are tasked to uh, manage Hong Kong and they have a uh, heavy uh, responsibility whether they can do their job well with a major impact on our lives. Since the handover, our civil servants have maintained uh, their integrity and their efficiency. However, society has changed recently. Uh, society is highly politicized, uh, and uh, there are geopolitical tensions and then um, rapid development of technology. The civil servants must enhance efficiency and uh, broaden the horizon to uh, face up to challenges. We are grateful to Mr. Tony Z for moving this motion so that we can explore this area. The first part of the motion is to improve the employment terms, manpower, work environment, and training of civil servants. I agree that civil servants face a lot of pressure politically. We often talk about uh, they're being in a hot kitchen, and the peak of civil service retirement will come very soon, and uh, there is shortage of manpower, and therefore there must be improvement in training of civil servants so that they can uh, give full play to their potential. Uh, regarding uh, the pay and conditions of service, they are already superior to uh, their counterparts in the private sector, and uh, whenever there are government vacancies, a lot of uh, Candidates are attracted to apply for these jobs, and therefore there is no need to increase their pay for the time being. Rather, civil service pay should be performance packed so that people can uh, be um, incentivized to work harder. And the second part of the motion is about promoting creativity and innovation, and I think this is the crux of the matter. Because of uh, systems of red tapes, uh, efficiency is not high enough. Members of the public would like uh, land to be sold and uh, housing to be provided expeditiously. But uh, the laws as well as the administrative procedures are very cumbersome, and sometimes uh, departments have overlapping responsibilities. The approval of uh, projects is slow. According to uh, experts in the past, it only took three to five years uh, for a uh, public uh, project to be delivered. Now it's five to seven years. I think this is because of uh, coordination among government departments. We understand that civil servants should follow procedures, but senior civil servants have forgotten that they are in the best position uh, to Ha know how to amend procedures. So they have to amend the procedures first before uh, the council can vet these applications. Senior civil servants are highly paid. I hope they understand that they do have the responsibility to improve the efficiency of the government. The CE knows very well where the problems lie. In her platform, she said that the government should from time to time review the mode of operation and uh, relieve the work pressure of civil servants. The CE, in answer to an oral question of mine, said that uh, procedures uh, should be streamlined and the introduction of uh, technology can lead to a new mindset of uh, doing things. For instance, in uh, the replacement of uh, our smart ID card, the procedures have been very smooth as a good example. The government should continue to enhance its efficiency. We have over 170,000 civil servants. The majority of them are dedicated 
and uh, hardworking. However, they are bound to be black sheep. From time to time, we hear from the media. Uh, how civil servants are lazy, and we hear negative comments about them. Uh, they rather um, want to um, keep to the old way of doing things to avoid mistakes. I think there is uh, this common phenomenon in the civil service. Uh, the pay is not packed to their performance, but to their position. Well, in the private sector, those who are competent get better rewarded. Whereas in the government, this is not necessarily the truth. If you do more, you may risk making mistakes. And to play safe, civil servants I would rather um, not to want to avoid mistakes. And so very soon they can uh, be retired. I think the CE knows uh, this very well because I used to be a civil servant. Our competitiveness is uh, falling, and because of the trade conflicts, we are we faced with challenges, and we must improve the civil service. This is urgent. Thank you, Dr. Smith Quad. I'd like to thank Mr. Tony Chair for moving this motion. The civil service has always been um, responsible and supporting the policy making of the SAL government. So I support the motion in the sense that the employment terms of the civil service can be improved and training should be enhanced. The civil services, um, creative thinking, efficiency, the research and application of technology, etc., have been areas I have always advocated. Since time is limited, I would focus on the requests of this discipline services. They play a, an essential and challenging role in maintaining peace and order of Hong Kong, and they help stabilize our society. So maintaining a reliable and conscientious civil or disciplined um, service is crucial to Hong Kong. We should offer competitive terms of employment as well as remuneration in order to retain talent. We have um, reflected the um, calls of the civil discipline services to the statutory for the civil service, and I'd like to focus on a few points. And um, currently, um, there is a serious succession issue among the discipline services. So for discipline services staff who joined before June 2000, they should they can opt to um, extend their service to age 60. Even if this is not possible, can these um, retirees be re-employed so that they would be um, give they can be given a year long contract subject to renewal every year? The government said um, such proposal is already or option is already available, but discipline discipline services said that um, such applications are highly unlikely to be approved. So extension of service would allow um, these retirees to continue to offer their expertise and experience. And um, since the government is advocating retirement at age 65, I hope they can reconsider the issue. All along, we have um, been angling for great structural review for the discipline forces. And and in the 2015 policy address, the um, government said that they would conduct GSR. They appointed the SCDS for this review, and it will take um, the review would take eighteen months to be complete. But by twenty twenty, the discipline services have offered um, a lot of views during this time. They wonder um, when these the um, proposals would be implemented after the review is completed by twenty twenty, and they hope that the um, proposals would be implemented by the time SCDS is appointed. We have been hoping to provide Chinese medicine and dental services to the discipline services, but um, there has not been any update 
um, on Chinese medicine services after eight months. As for dental services, the waiting time is um, an average one year and two months. This is certainly not satisfactory, and dental services must be enhanced. As for um, departmental quarters, they are a major incentive for discipline services. Apart from a shortage of staff quarters, there are procedural issues as well. So for um, inspectorate um, staff and above, they have to um, move out before they reach um, point um, 20. They can either opt for an allowance or um, purchase a property, but this would be very difficult for them. For senior staff quarters, a lot of pensionable staff have retired, so these um, units have been vacated, but the um, inspector um, grade staff could not move in. So hopefully the requirements should be um, relaxed from point 20 to point 26. That way they can have a lot more options and you can make the best use of the staff quarters. The shortage of staff quarters is still very serious, so hopefully more quarters can be built soon. To um, ensure um, dignity for the discipline services, you should discuss with the Security Bureau um, the new offense of um, disrespect to public offices. As for the Hong Kong Chuhai Macau Bridge, there is no canteen. You did not consider the needs of the civil service and discipline services, and this must be enhanced. As for the customs, um, there's a lack of manpower due to the um, need to enforce the trade descript descriptions ordinance. As for the correctional services department, the special grants should be offered to retain talent. So these are all very important issues to the discipline services. Generally speaking, the, the more training on technology and artificial intelligence should be provided to the civil service. Most of the current training offered are um, they lack variety and um, there is a lack of focus on interaction. So for um, CSDI big data analysis, these are not currently covered in civil service training. We hope training can be enhanced on these fronts because they would be crucial to collaboration of the civil service and to facilitate effective policy making for the government. I would offer more views in the future. Thank you. Mr. Ronick Chen. President, the late um, English writer Douglas Adams once said that to give real service, you must add something that cannot be bought or measured with money, and that is sincerity and integrity. This shows that um, civil servants, as the most valuable assets of the government, they their value cannot be simply gauged with money. Their value lies with their dedication to serving the public with their heart. I would not um, talk much about remuneration. I like Instead, I'd like to um, focus on efficiency of their work and how they can serve the public. The SAR government operates a quality civil service that is um, of much acclaim and um, Recently, the um, Lausanne School of Switzerland published a competitiveness report. Hong Kong ranked second in the world, and there are four um, scoring criteria, including um, efficiency of government infrastructure, conducting of business. Hong Kong ranks top in terms of government efficiency. However, according to the Popular Opinion Survey of HAU, according to the latest study on the popularity of the chief executive, 48% of the respondents said they were unhappy about the SAR government. 
so uh, these are very contrasting results. And if we discount political factors, um, the former reflected the um, fact that the public um, has a mediocre impression on the government. And what could be the reasons? I think it is because the government uh, fails to address um, the needs of the people. Early, earlier this year, a joint visit was conducted by LegCo members to the Long River Delta. Um, we conducted a duty visit. I'm sure members were inspired by the visit, and they understood that um, providing convenience to the public is not all that challenging. We visited um, um, Hangzhou, and there were more than 100 um, office windows as well as 24-hour service terminals. They operate around the clock, and um, residents could enjoy convenient public services. The Hangzhou municipal government um, claims that one-stop services can be operated or provided Whereas um, for the Hong Kong government, most um, departments operate from Monday to Friday from 9 to 5. And very often, people would have to take leave to um, receive services. And services are also um, scattered. Even though most departments have moved into Tema, some have moved into the trade and industry um, tower, as well as other new government buildings, so the services are currently scattered. In the future, through e-government services, including the um, launch of EID next year, the public can enjoy more convenience, and they can enjoy the services they need at home and not be um, constrained by office hours. President, apart from the service venues I mentioned, Hangzhou also um, rolled out a um, resident card for Hangzhou citizens. It was um, launched in 2004, and um, citizens can see doctors with this card, and they can pay after the doctor visits. As for public transport, um, the system is similar to Hong Kong and other public services, including borrowing services at libraries. And this card can also um, facilitate financial services through another company, um, personally personalized um, credit rating is offered. Whereas um, in Hong Kong, this such services are provided by private organizations. Payment um, functions are have not been included. Hong Kong was one of the earliest pioneers for smart um, IDs or cards, smart cards, since um, the implementation, since the um, birth of Octopus, and um, the use of the cards were constrained to consumption, security, etc. According to a 2018 research, including smart city um, development, Hong Kong fell behind countries in Europe and the US, and we fell behind countries such as Seoul, Tokyo, Singapore, and we even lost out to um, mainland cities like Hangzhou and um, Wu Shi. And um, we need cross-bureau collaboration and an innovative spirit. And these are the um, crux of the motion today. To develop a smart government, we cannot just rely on the Innovation and Technology Bureau. In terms of um, open data, since support from other departments would be needed. The ITB could not provide a concrete timeline on its implementation. I hope the government would learn from other advanced cities in promoting the research and application of innovative technology. According to the CSB website, there are five core values of the civil service, including streamlining procedures, a proactive attitude, impartial attitude, collaboration, and a learning spirit. As things stand, I think um, the first item, that is streamlining processes, is especially important. That is to abolish unnecessary procedures and work. And this is related to um, providing um, considerate services. If um, civil servants would um, think about results instead of procedures, 
I'm sure our civil service will remain the most e efficient civil service in the world, and it will win over the people as well. Thank you. Dr. Kike Kwok.